Hello everyone, Master Xeon 1001 here, and in this video I wanted to talk a little bit about HardOps 00984.2 Neodymium. This is just a micro update, so that's why we didn't change the name. So starting out, I'm just going to go ahead and press X and delete this cube. We're going to shift A at a plane RX90 and look at this from front view. We'll tap into edit mode, right click and choose subdivide. We're going to select this dot right in the center and use the classic tool circle. You have to have loop tools enabled under add-ons for this to work or else you will receive an error. But we will go ahead and just separate that face out that we just turned into a circle. And with this shape selected, we're just going to press Q and hit it with twist 360. And you can see that it actually got the wrong way. This is more like a gun, but we actually don't want that at this moment. So we'll right click cancel. Control A and apply the rotation. By applying the rotation, we can now twist 360 this and get exactly the twist that we want, even though the circle's getting skewed. So we'll just stop this at eight, but I'll tap into edit mode and you can see that I'm looking at the deformed version along with the undeformed version here in the center. And so by pressing S and X on the circular area, I can just scale this in so that it deforms and keeps the circle just right. And now we have actually the shape that we want, radial arrayed. So by following this up with dice, we can now see that dice is a little bit more stable, a little bit more sane and capable of just cutting and just being done. So we'll just go and add a modifier, solidify, and then S sharp. And once again with Q and we're finished. So that's really what this release was all about, improving dice and making it where users can go in their control tilde and modify dice to be exactly the way you want it before you ever even use it, depending on your type of usage. So I do want to expand more on this behavior in the future because it has worked out so well for us with sharpening and workflow and even general options is quite useful. So we'll uh, go ahead and delete that and uh, I'll bring in the next object, which will just be a cube. And we're just going to grab this corner and control shift B to bevel it giving us this corner. And before I get out of edit mode, I'm going to shift S snap my cursor to this face. And if we alt W start box cutter, I can just start drawing a box on this face. And so with this box, I want to radial spin it around this cursor. So under mesh tools, you now have radial array. And by hovering over it, we can see the tool tip control left mouse click to rotate it around the cursor. And by scrolling the wheel, we can get it exactly where we want. And so this actually allows us to work a little bit easier and a little bit smarter with box cutter where we can just draw, shift to live, and then go under mesh tools, radial array. So someday I want box cutter to be capable of uh, dealing with this all on its own. But this is an issue that comes up quite repeatedly when it comes to working in a radial area and it not being able to cooperate. So these are the two main themes of hard ops. However, blank material also plays uh, a slightly more major role in this release. But these two tools are the ones that are the main focuses. However, if you press Alt M and go under blank materials, you'll see that this option has been expanded even more. So if we switch over to render, we still have our F9. We have options for colorize, which will now add a new dynamic to the way that you deal with blank material. However, you know me, I like keeping it classic. And of course, if you don't like the material you received, you can always just click it again and it will give you a new material without creating additional ones in its wake. So you can just click it over and over and over to just get that perfect material. But without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. First and foremost, I want to give a shout out to Luke Meyer, who replied in the form of a comment, leaving a um, bombshell of a revelation about modifiers and turntables, which resulted in us actually creating a new tool that's been in hard ops now. So just to show it in action, we'll just alt H bring back the camera and the light, you know, the camera isn't targeting anything. It's just a camera 
and the, the cursor's in the center right where we left it always and so I'm going to shift A and we're just going to bring out an empty and I like spheres as empties so we'll just right click it and expand the draw size and we're just going to select the camera and select the empty and control P and we'll just keep transform you probably can do it without it but now when I rotate the empty it rotates the camera and so if we're in camera view you know when I rotate the empty it rotates the camera getting us a turntable well he provided me this script where if you put it in the Z rotation which is basically the following here you know I'll be displaying his comment up on screen hopefully um, I'll make it bigger as well but you know frames times 2 times pi divided by and then of course this call back here to the frame end which is just amazing because what it results in is just a perfect turntable and so this is basically how you would set it up manually like I was trying to show chip this I was like dude um, you know you should make a kid ops insert of this like a long time ago I was trying to do a, a, a kid ops turntable insert and I just never got around to it and so it, we ended up automating it because it's literally a script and I actually want to start doing some tools that actually add drivers to objects and so we've been experimenting with it just to see if uh, it's it's stable and not crashy and that the dependency graph is truly better than it used to be and all that stuff but you can see that this just plays you know you can't even tell where it ends or begins we change this to a hundred it goes faster but just notice the perfect loop just great and so dropping that on our lap like that was just amazing I always joke that uh, we can just ask for ask in the comments and someone will definitely have figured it out because for some reason all the greatest people are in the comments of things I don't know you guys are, are nuts but I get emails all the time from people that are like I'm a web guy or I'm a programmer and they turn out to definitely be uh, putting their money where their mouth is so just amazing you know beware the commenter you know but this thing is awesome and so you know I want to create some tools that basically is geared to helping people present their models and showcase them adequately so that they can you know get the point across with the model and also you know present it to a client or get that job or whatever you know like we've made tools to help you make stuff you know now we want to make tools to help you you know get the job you know so with that we have to talk about you know down packing and exporting and unreal and all that stuff so I know so much work so anyways we take this select this and we'll just delete this and if you select the cube you don't even have to select the cube but it's under operations just an option called add camera and once you do that you have a camera in here so you know we had to run into an executive decision of do we want to make the camera that you add just be the default camera and I was like I don't know about that I actually might want to add a camera use it as part of a scene as like a marker in the timeline so I don't think I want to do that so we'll press control numpad zero which will make this the active camera and we have the same result here so it's just been automated into a step so that way you don't have to be like me and keep a document of uh, drivers to play with but this driver is amazing like right now we're using it to turn a camera but I could see it turning something else and we've been using it to turn other things and it's kind of crazy in that regard so I mean that's basically um, you know my shout out for Lufmeyer for his amazing comment and reply just kind of just blowing me out of the water because in the video of rendering I was just fighting with it and it was just BS you know and I was getting frustrated in the video because you know it's just not easy but he went to show that you can solve it with one line and the thing is, is that with the when you ask the right person you can solve anything with one line sometimes I, I show proxy some gobbledygook I wrote and I'm like how do I fix this and he's like oh you just use this one line I'm like one line oh yeah one line one line yeah one line so here we go perfect turntable one line and so if you have hard ops it's just going to be a thing here but I do want to add control behavior in the future where if you control click it it just makes the object rotate and stuff like that because I have been playing with constraints and extrapolation and stuff like that for making machinery so I definitely want to show how to um, you know turn some of this nonsense into finished models because I'm always doing randomness and there's definitely more to it than just being random like sometimes you see things in these shapes that help you in the future so with that we'll continue on so this particular version seeks to 
fix a lot of the things that were issues as a result of the last release. You know, usually we release a new feature and then we have to come in and do a little bit of finessing in order to get it to work out right. So I'm going to look at this from front view. We're just going to SX to stretch this out and press SY and scale it in. And we're just um, having some fun here. In fact, might as well use some general modeling for this instead of just cutting. Sometimes I lean towards uh, just using box cutter and all that, but we'll just kind of chill it out, you know. So I'll press Alt X and we will use Symmetrize to Symmetrize this in edit mode. And I'm just going to press 2 to jump to edge and we'll grab this edge here and press Control Shift B. And normally I have Shift tilde map to select boundary loop right here. So we're going to go ahead and do that today. I'm going to right click assign shortcut shift tilde because I really love pressing shift tilde getting my boundary loop and then beveling it like you see here in order to uh, just kind of space an area out and just grab these edges and bring it out I can't really see uh, much of what's going on in my viewport so we'll use EVHQ to give it some shadows and everything just kind of jump those settings up but working this way is just fine you know we'll use knife right here and press Z to cut through. You can see the dots actually get darker when I press Z, indicating it's cutting through. We'll grab this too, just space that out, real nice little spacer there. Because if we were to grab this and move just this face, it would be skewed, so we don't want that ever. Just happy little skews here. So Alt X, we'll mirror that over to the other side. Shift A, we're gonna bring in a cylinder, R, X, or just R, nine, zero. And let's look at this thing from the side. So in edit mode with Alt Z to see through it, I'm just gonna grab these verts, E, Y, S, Y, to just bring this out. And um, this shape is primed for us to dice or uh, primed for us to um, use the mesh clean on. So you can see under my mesh clean options that I have active already set up. So it'll, dice, it'll um, clean the active selection. I keep seeing dice here. It'll uh, clean the active selection and also it's been a long time since I ever had to talk about clean mesh and how it's built to be preemptive. It's built to uh, give you options before you even run it to have it run right the first time. You know, there's options that you know you want before you ever even use the tool. So that's one of the uh, f final touches that we had done to uh, mesh clean a while back. And as a result, mesh clean just got to that level where we no longer had to talk about it ever again. And this is because, you know, you could set up that behavior in your startup scene because you knew which one worked best for you. And it just worked. And so we sought to do the same thing with dice. So I'm just pressing S and I'm going to hold shift and press X to scale it on everything but X. Just to get a smaller one, but still in the circular formation here. And we'll bring it here. Bring this back. Actually, we have things sticking out here. And we could always just cut the back off, but we'll select both of these, select this, Control Shift Plus. These have all been union, but the shading looks kind of off. So we go in here and look at our shading options under Sharp, and we probably want maybe 30 or 45, maybe even 60 as our angle split here to set auto smooth. And now we got some pretty good shading here, but you can see that circles will uh, kind of play with your patience. You know, sometimes you want to work at a 30, but you see that these circles just aren't having it. And even at 45, they're still just going to really test our patience. I bet it's something like 50. It'll chill out. Not even. So let's just jump it up to 60. Call it a day. But we just got to keep in mind that that's our role now. So shift A, bring in another cube. And I know, basic stuff, boring stuff. But, you know, we're just having a good time here. And we'll shift D, S, X. Bring this duplicate out. You know, we'll talk about that one later. We'll take this, select this. And with the Q menu, we're just going to union them together. So sometimes I find myself rolling through these actions very quickly in videos and I become concerned that maybe I am too fast and the commenters are right. So just know that I'm taking measures outside of my videos to uh, get others to uh, try to do content, but they just don't see a niche. But, you know, I just send them the comments of you guys complaining. And I'm like, look at these complainers. There's a need for you. Please fulfill it. So right here we'll do a difference. And I'm not even complaining about complainers because complaints give you intel on things you need to refine. So just know that I'm always um, 
try my best to uh, improve things. So we have our shape here. And this time I wanted to create it with hard ops just for fun because, you know, people ask what's the difference between hard ops and box cutter. And, you know, this, this video right here is it, dude. Like, I mean, you can do everything with hard ops. It just might take a little bit longer because we like to step through the process. You know, we like to talk about it, like to think about it. But, you know, let's go on our Q menu and we're going to play with dice. And you can see that dice is the same as it was supposed to be. However, we cut, it does it. But if we bring up the um, hops helper with control tilde, you can see that there's now options here. So now uh, internally, we had a slight disagreement about how dice should work. I felt that it should use intersect, which is similar to box cutter. However, it does have some issues with inaccuracy. So knife project was presented as a solution, which requires some um, special stuff done for the view in order to make it work, which makes it my least favorite option, but is an option. But this will allow you to compare the algorithm of how uh, dice works. So we can definitely find the best one that works for you, but just know that it's there. The adjust here will choose whether you want your mouse movement to change the axis, which is how I want it to behave similar to loop cut or segments, which can be a little bit more sensible depending on your usage of a laptop. So if we bring up dice again, now moving the mouse actually adjusts the segment. So we may find that there's a contingency of people who like this particular system of working. And so we can just keep that in mind going forward and try to set up some standards in our tools to uh, get them a lot more congruent. There's a lot of background work being done behind the scenes that should result in a major update sometime in the future that will really bring all these tools into a uh, more equilateral realm of being able to work. But continuing on, first thing I want to do is delete this face, just select the face and press X. We're going to Alt X, but we're going to use modifier to mirror it to the other side. And you can tell I've done this like a hundred thousand times. And then I just twist 360 and we just dial it in. And you can see that it didn't work out because scale isn't a thing. And this was another discussion that we had was whether or not we should um, deal with people's scale without them asking, whether we should deal with people's transformations without them asking. And the uh, actual response to these things was um, definitely not, we should definitely not do things without people's permission to their meshes and data, without at least making them aware of it, without at least providing them toggles. So now that we've uh, kind of applied scale and cleaned things up, run S sharpen on it, we go under here and we run twist 360 and it behaved just as I expected by shooting out into space because it just gives it too many segments right before the release I did want to do like a preemptive segment area but I was like if we give our tools preemptive settings here for everything it's going to uh, obstruct my master plan of actually beginning to combine more and more of these tools into things because twist 360 and radial are both two different ideas but they're also very connected so Moving on to the next thing, the goal of this release was to get everybody using the new Radial 360. So if we take this cube, we press Control Shift B, we have this strange face, right? And we'll snap our cursor here and everybody's been here. You've been working an area and you want a radial array around this area, right? So you press VV, that's not going to work. And we've had long talks about why this doesn't work and how I need to bring cursor back into the Bing with box cutter again, but that's just a talk for another day. And really, I just can't get into it. So really, it's easier for us to shift to live and under mesh tools is the new radial array. So by hovering over it, we can see the tool tip and the tool tip tells us that by control clicking it, it will radial around the 3D cursor. So we control click that. A lot of care was taken in order to make sure that this case was taken care of because we need to use the origin of the set by the 3D cursor, but we don't want to apply the rotation, which would actually make this a uh, global radial, which would not work for solving this particular case. But whenever it comes to these sort of things, I do like to ensure that we solve very specific issues that definitely come up repeatedly, um, in addition to, of course, making the tool more functional for all. So continuing on, we're just going to use box cutter. I'm going to draw another box here, shift to live. And with our cursor still in the same place, we just control click and it just works. And this is really what Radial Array was supposed to be. So I received a ton of comments that's like, hey, Radial Array is terrible. I'm like, yeah, no, um, I got to do better. Um, but it's just a temporary solution. So right here, I was going to talk about getting an empty in here and then mirroring across, but it's just easier to duplicate it than it is to explain that. 
So with this selected, we're just going to control click to just keep radialing. And you can see that we're able to work in this area consistently and repeatedly without difficulty. And so this was something that the previous radial solutions did not solve. So this was a task I handed off to uh, our boy Bond7 and was like, dude, I just want you to rethink radial array. You know, I, I have some criteria for it, but we'll, you know, we'll get more specific as we go. But for now, I just want something that's fun, intuitive, doesn't involve uh, dots because that's a whole nother thing. The dots are great for radial array, by the way, and we still support them with this new system that I'm showcasing here. However, if we do go into hops tool and we look at this, you can see that there's a series of dots here where we can deal with the displacement and it's actually working linearly, which shows that the local rotation has not been applied. And these are the things that I care about. So my goal is to definitely have people handing things off into hops tool where you can just go and grab your favorite dots and just have this thing doing exactly what you need it to. In fact, this is the one that we need if we want to add more segments or reduce the segments. However, I am still of the opinion that it's either too sensitive or not sensitive enough. So continuing on, once you start doing this, you'll find it is definitely quite addictive. We just go into box cutter, draw a box, shift to live, and we never move our cursor right because the new left mouse defaults makes it harder for us to move our cursor. You have to think about moving your cursor. Back in the day, I used to move my cursor all over the place, but now cursors just stay. Sometimes I'm like, where's my cursor? Oh man, it's where I left it an hour ago. So we just go under mesh tools, radial array, and it's a done deal. And we could even go back and adjust the radial array, which right here, I see that we need to uh, control click in order to maintain our radial array, which is not desirable behavior. Hot fix coming soon. But these sort of things are always, um, it's better for us to try to get them out sooner rather than later, since uh, the longer these things go on, the more they um, become mental on the people working on them themselves and the people working on the people working on them. So it's for the best that we get this out to you, get your comments, get your complaints, and come back to you with an even better version. But for now, I'm proud to present to you Radial Array V3. Now with 3D cursor power, working exactly the way it's intended, far more intuitive than before. I mean, we could take this whole box, hit this thing with a radial array, just push this thing out, start rotating it, and it just works. We can go on hops tool, just start playing with the displace, grab the radial array, control shift drag to uh, adjust the segments if that's what you're into. But just to let you know that that sort of thing is now more than possible in hops. So we'll press a couple of control Z's to bring it back. And one of the things I definitely want to see in the V3 is the ability to uh, basically apply the modifiers on the mesh and then run dice and then use that to cycle into twist inside of a fluid motion. But I just cannot get enough of just twisting random things. Sometimes I just get something that completely impresses me. Now I think I have a call on the phone and it's Octane. You know, they probably want to have a word now, but that was completely unintentional. So continuing on. So blank material was a rather basic idea, basic concept. However, that doesn't stop people from wanting to add additional things to it. So we'll select a few objects here on this box study of KMT. And I'm just gonna press Alt M and we're just gonna add a blank material. And you can see that it adds your generic random blank material. However, if we press F9, we can bring up the F9 window and we can click on colorize, which is what was brought to the table with this update. So now you're capable of going in here and actually colorizing your blank material to have any color you want. So I actually like this particular color. However, we can actually jump this around the spectrum to get any sort of shades. And this has really resulted in some much funner, uh, cooler renders, uh, well, literally cooler renders because we're adding cooler colors, but still a fun time nonetheless. However, if we are to select, if we were to select this top piece and press Alt M and add a blank material, we could press F9 and actually choose a car paint from here. And a car paint material will come in with a hue and shift that you can adjust. However, there is a material created behind the scenes that you can go and adjust in the shading editor. And we'll just take a look at it here. So right here is the hue saturation. So by just adjusting the hue saturation, I find that you're able to make changes just a little bit quicker 
than if you were to play with the F6, which is something that we're still working on fine tuning. But you can see that there are quite a few angles to approach this for variation. However, I am one to uh, go into something more neutral and adjust the values to get something dark like so. And we can even go back to our layout tab and select this piece and this piece and select the main piece and just control L link their materials. And the copper seems to, you know, almost work. It actually does work. We can select this and give it the same material like so. And with our car paint material, we also have a flake parameter. So we can go back to our shading and just play with that. And that is going to be right here. So we take this down to something like 20 and you're able to get a much more interesting pattern going on with your car paint material that will affect varying levels of the roughness. So this is something that we were experimenting with at the very end because it seems like it would be able to be used to create some really cool and quick materials on the fly. However, my main gripe is that one should be able to go inside the node editor and quickly, meaning I want you to be able to go inside their properties or the hops helper and quickly grab their parameters and set them to how they want without having to expand a whole bunch of drop downs. However, I am proud of Blank Material V3 that we are releasing in this particular version. So I hope you guys do give it a try. And with that, we wrap up this video. All right, I'm gonna pretend that someone in the audience yelled, hey, don't go. And so I'm just gonna keep going for a moment. We'll just have a general chat here. So we're looking at this from the front view. I'm just gonna alt click these two segments and delete them. And you know, probably the first thing we wanna do is control click to put a bevel here, but I'll press one in order to set the profile to 0.5. And we'll give this a little bit of thickness here. And control A duplicate to mesh and we'll just control click to here and we actually want this to be the active area where everything's getting snapped to as far as scale so period 3d cursor sz zero and that's a pretty good looking stage there we'll sharpen it so far so good however i don't like all these edges skewing so we'll use our classic uh, clean mesh here to just clean the mesh classic mesh tool. Um, you know, previously when I would do these little pipe maquettes, I would um, change it back to 3D cursor. Previously when I would do these little pipe maquettes, I would start with a plane and I would just set the origin to one of these corners so that way I could scale it like so. And then I would take one of these points and just bevel it, round it out, scale it down. And this is good and all, except, you know, whenever you convert it to a curve using Smart Apply and right click cancel, this curve is actually not good enough. And the reason is, is that if we go in here and we add segments, we can add these segments on the V, but we can't add them on the U because it's just not that type of curve. So if we had a Bezier curve, which is at our 3D cursor. Let's put our cursor back. We give this segments. You can see that I'm able to add them on the U, add them on the V here, simplifying it and adding more resolution to it. So this is coming handy for curve deformation. And so while we got this curve, we'll uh, reset it back to its default. And one thing that I like to do with curves is straighten them out. So first I put the end on the cursor or the, uh, the end on the origin. And we'll just extrude this out exactly to ignore all the curvy bits. We're just looking at point to point we select it all, we can press V to change this to vector. And this is pretty much, you know, getting us back to where we started. You know, not perfect, but definitely a start here. We can even um, start modifying these curves. And I just want to show an add-on that's in Blender here called Curve, Curve Tools. And this tool is amazing because Someone asked a support question of, hey, how would you bevel a curve? And I was like, uh, you know, I, I turn it to a mesh first and then I bevel it and then I turn it back into a curve. And someone else replied, hey, use curve tools because there's an option called fill it where if we press F9, you can actually fill it a curve and get a filleted result. So 
if we were to turn this into a curve, you can see that we're able to add spans where it counts. And this is just something that we just didn't have with the previous curve. In fact, I can uh, up the resolution here to be like 64, which results in a just better arc when it comes to deforming things. So because our origin is set right here, we'll just put our origin there and place our cylinder, GZ1 to place it on top, Control A or uh, Shift S origin to cursor so that we can just scale it down like so. And I just want to show how easy it is to play with these little pipe things because it's it's really basic and something that I've been working on doing as a tutorial. So, you know, here's my practice run of that as a tutorial. So hopefully you guys like it. We're just going to delete these interior faces because they're just not going to work. And I admit that Array is in a state right now. So I'm pleased to announce that we will be improving Array dramatically. But in the meantime, I've actually just been lazy and just using hops array you know here i am adding an array and then i just grab the dot and i can just press one to just set it right on top and i can even grab the dot and just control jack drag it to uh, add more segments on here but it looks like um, camtasia's got some hotkeys here for doing some junk so i'll need to uh, modify that afterwards so let's just go into helper and just modify it here because at least Camtasia is not pausing my videos anymore. So if you experience any pauses in my previous recordings in this, it's because Camtasia's hotkey is shared with F9. So every time I pressed F9, it wouldn't do anything. It would just pause Camtasia. But with this object selected and then our curve, we could press Control Shift P or Control P and use Curve to form. And here we are deforming our curve. Just And I'm, I'm scaling it down on the Z so we get something good going on here. And you can't get it just right. I mean, I know you lose some volume here, but that's why you have to build things around it. So we're just gonna bring out a happy little cube here. You know, all these cubes are happy until they see what I'm about to do to them. So that's why it's one cube at a time for me. And we'll just go in box cutter. And you might be wondering why box cutter looks the way it looks right now. It's because um, I, I was playing with the preferences and I realized that, you know, it could be simpler uh, as far as the interface. So I just played with the interface ideas to just see what a simple would look like for me because, you know, I'm cutting, I'm drawing red shapes. If I draw a green shape, you guys know it's a union shape. If you don't, then, you know, please check page 43 of the instruction manual. Just kidding. But uh, the color coding language that we tried to set up here is uh, pretty consistent. So, I mean, you don't need to know on top that I'm cutting because I always press J to shift it into a join anyways. So it doesn't matter. Right here, I'm using a mirror tool and we still want to do some revamps to the mirror tool as well. Uh, I'm not afraid to admit that there's a lot of things in hard ups that need some work. And we've been planning on getting around to it. It's just box cutter was the uh, focus of everything last year. And we're finally just now giving hard ops the attention it deserves. So we're just creating this shape, just, you know, talking. And so I'm just going to press control A, turn this into a mesh. And we will use dice to dice it a bit. And then we'll use twist 360 to twist it around. And we'll press D in order to bring it in, which is something I just love doing. One day I'll have a twist happening with the 3D cursor as well, but sometimes I'm mistaken radial for 3D cursor. And so all I want to do is just snap this object. Let's see, snap selection to cursor and scale it around to fit. And here we are with our snug little container for this side of the hose. We could just shift D duplicate this and just go on edit mode and just be adventurous. What's crazy is uh, when we made this initially, I was watching uh, Sergey on Twitch use our tool and he was using it in what I would say was incorrect, but it turned out that, you know, that's the way I'm using it right now. He was correct. He saw it in a different way than, you know, I initially anticipated, which I'm always in a state of surprise. I'm just going to bring a circle in here and you know what, we'll just grow this circle and delete those pieces. And we're just gonna extrude this inward. Select these two pieces, Control Shift B. Control click on Smart Apply to turn it into a curve. 
And here we are with our ring around the conduit piece here. And I'll just select both of these and we'll parent them to the first one just so we can um, move them both together. However, something's going on with curves and their ability to be parented to objects. I just don't know. So we're just gonna make it a mesh and roll with the punches. I must keep. I must mention I am also using BuildBot. So I'm just used to uh, running into occasional weirdness on a day-to-day -day basis and just rolling with it. So what I wanna do here is select the end of the curve, which is right here. We wanna put our cursor there and then we'll shift as snap our selection to the cursor. R90, shift R to repeat. And we'll just fit this piece just right there. And we see that we just need a little bit more wall to make this work. So let's bring this up. And we probably need a little bit more wall to make it work outside as well. And so I was actually playing with this idea the other day. And it was uh, coming along pretty good, but I just couldn't figure out what to do with it. So that brought me to another experiment. So we'll take this, control click all the way to here to select this. We'll press P to separate it and control one to uh, convert it into a, a subvision mesh and then we'll convert it into a literal mesh. So this is what we have. And if we control click smart apply, you know, we're turning it into a curve again, but we'll right click, which leaves it as a curve, kind of a bug, but a bug that works to our advantage here. Cursor to select it and then in object mode, origin to cursor. So now our origin's at the beginning of this curve that's flowing upward. If it's not flowing upward, if it's flowing the wrong direction, you need to right click and choose to uh, flip your direction, which is right here. It, sometimes, you know, God smiles on you and it'll just go right the first time. But we can shift duplicate this piece here and unparent it because we don't need the parenting relationship. And just remove all these modifiers. Maybe not that one. We actually maybe want this one because it's neutral. And we'll just delete all the modifiers. We'll shift S, snap uh, selection to cursor. And how do we want this thing? I would say we want it like uh, this, rotate it 90, rotate it 90. And we probably want it, I don't know, say here. I'm just eyeballing it, the, the worst way to model, by the way. But control A will um, origin to cursor and alt w i'll just use hops because i just can't stop can't just can't stop using hops and we'll hit it with the y again if we apply the rotation it's fine so we'll just press one to slap it to one and we could make it fit the curve if we want it but i just don't feel like it so we'll select the mesh select the curve control p curve deform and of course these things always don't go the way that you want, which just drives me crazy. But let's go into modifier helper and we'll just change it to Y. And this is more like it. We now have it deforming along the curve. And we also want to uh, select the curve and press control T and then rotate it 90. And this will just turn this into a track that's going along the shape here. And we can even select this mirrored across to the other side. And that looks good. And we can also lower our count here. In fact, just to get experimental and try something I have never tried before, I'm going to tab in, select this curve, bring it out, and bring it down to back. And it appears that that's a thing, just that easy. I mean, we're not going to talk about volume issues with the curve here, but you know, that's how I've been creating these like little maquette scenes. And you know, I'll go in hit it with the blank materials, tweak around, play with it a bit, you know, till I get it just right, you know, put some pulse in there. If you're not playing with pulse and working in EVHQ, you know, what are you doing? You're missing out on some delicious shadows and, and visual details. So we bring in a circle, RX90, Q, adjust circle. And we did make it where when you add a blank material, you can add it to curves. So we'll just put an emission on here which will be a random pulse emission. And we'll just stick one here. Maybe uh, maybe duplicate the curve itself. I was actually about to duplicate in edit mode and just make a duplicate that way, but we wanna be able to duplicate these around and use them at various intervals. But you can see that this is uh, kind of a real fun way to just get in and have a good time with Blender. 
just play around with curves and the ability to deform things and you know see what ideas come to you because we definitely want to uh, take this curve deforming business to the max and finally put some conclusions on some of our goals so snap selection to cursor alt r we'll just get this to fit it won't look exactly as the top one but you know i should have planned better if that were the case by doing it before the duplication but i could also be joining things and linking their duplicates but we don't want to get involved with that and also we need a second ring in here at the base and if we just start playing our timeline it'll just already start pulsing and we can always turn on bloom under our render settings here so as you see they've moved around a little bit we'll just turn on some bloom lower our threshold maybe make our intensity too really lower that threshold so that way we only get the bloom happening on the lights maybe set it to one because it's just a bit much right now but now we have our pulsing light happening so we could grab our curve you know the curve that we uh, just kind of hooked over here duplicate it give it some glow as well we could give it the same glow and also we can't mirror while the uh, render is playing so now we can mirror it to the other side and this is what we're dealing with so as you can see it gets very serious very quick we can select this give it a principal shader because giving it a blank material is just not going to work and i do know that um you know there's going to be a few complaints that blank material doesn't work in edit mode however that is something that we have planned and are currently discussing so it is something that you know we definitely want to get get in there in the future for users but for now, you know, I just wanted to uh, just do a quick demo, just talking about hard ops, just showing kind of what we've been goofing off with, or at least me personally. I like making these little things just real fast and then just moving on to the next general part of business for today. But also this material just looks terrible. So sometimes you randomly get a dud. So I'm going to randomly give it metallicity, which will randomly make this look good. I mean, it's not so random when you know exactly what you have to do. To get a good looking material and for our piece here you know we'll just uh, hit that with the bevel give it an additional level of detail and we're already cooking here so if we wanted to we could uh press s shift z to scale this in i was actually just about to end this video but one more thing s shift z and we'll bring this piece out and the glowing and the blooms and the epilepsy is just getting to me so we'll just stop uh, animating for a moment you know the blinking lights will it's just there to um phase people let them know that um hey we're in control here it's safe you can relax you can go back to your home nothing to worry about with our super flu so now we have this piece and we want to make sure that they're merging with merge first last just to make sure everything's continuous and if we press alt m we can add a blank material and we'll just hit it with the glass and glass is actually supposed to be 50 percent transparent so I'm not sure why it isn't in this case, but I'll definitely double check that on the way out the door because I'm sure that we got that. But glass is supposed to actually look like that in the viewport. So now if we look at our render, this is what we have and we just let it play out and you have this psychedelic color light show that definitely makes me want to get off the computer and go eat some sherbet ice cream. So I hope you guys are having fun with these latest releases, playing around with dice and twist 360 and you're able to um, experience hops the way that it was intended because it's definitely supposed to be a fun experience and you know running into technical issues isn't supposed to be par for the course however i'm just going to hide this and we're just going to select this curve duplicate it outside and re-grab it and we're just going to give that some thickness and give it the same pulse material as these other two guys just so we have a pulse running down the street and with that, we can wrap this up and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you, of course, for watching. Thank you for your support. And of course, let us know if you have any support issues, requests or anything like that. And we'll be right back with the next update.